Greetings, Freedom Family. We are excited to announce that starting Sunday, August 1st, we will resume in-person service here at our normal time at 12 p.m. Please know that your safety is our top priority and we will be following the CDC guidelines very closely. Additionally, we will require that masks are worn throughout the duration of service, regardless of whether you've been vaccinated or not. Also, seating will be done in a socially distanced manner. If you are not feeling well, have been exposed to COVID-19 or around someone who you know has COVID-19, we ask that you please protect us all and remain home. Don't worry, all of our service will remain live streamed so you and others will not miss a service. Lastly, Bible study and Shava prayer will remain virtual. We will not be gathering in the sanctuary for those services. Thank you again for fellowshipping with us this last year and a half. We know it's been quite an adventure and we look forward to continue worshiping with you in the sanctuary and online. God bless. Greetings, Freedom Family. Thank you for joining us for service today. If this is your first time with us, welcome. We are so happy you joined us. Please leave your name and a comment so that we know you're here. Also, please be sure to follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can even leave your email in the comments if you would like to be contacted. Please remember we have Shava Prayer on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. led by Pastor Jerry Gurley. You can join us by calling into the Zoom information on the screen. We also have Bible study on YouTube every Thursday at 7 p.m. led by our senior pastor, Freddie Fillmore. And of course, we have service every Sunday at noon on Facebook and YouTube. If you would like to pay your tithes and offerings, there are three ways to give. You can give via Cash App, you can visit our website to pay online, or you can mail a check to the church. Now, please join us in the reading of our confession. We, the body of believers at Freedom Ministry Church, live in perfect harmony and full agreement with the Word of God, and there's no division among us. Every service is full of God's love, his praise, His revelation, and His power. Thousands of believers have been added to Freedom Ministry Church, both men, women, and children, and each member is fully committed to the work of the Lord. People are flowing into Freedom Ministry Church, and those who are coming with sicknesses or who are troubled with foul spirits are all cured. There is not one feeble among us. All the members of our congregation are tithers and we are living under an open heaven. We are bold in our witness and are reigning as kings in the earth. We are doers of the word of God and are experiencing only success and victory in every area of life. This church is prospering financially, having more than enough to meet the needs of every situation. We are redeemed from poverty, sickness, and spiritual death, and no weapon formed against us prospers. Thank you, Father, for our Memorial Life Center, for your blessings upon this church, and for using us to establish your word throughout the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for joining us. Feel free to leave a few amens and heart emojis in the comments. Now, I pray you enjoy this week's message. Welcome again to another broadcast brought to you by Freedom Ministries. I'm Minister Jenkins. Once again, Fred Fillmore Sr. is our pastor, and I want to thank you for tuning in today to hear the Word of God. If you will, uh, my Bible reading will be coming from Psalms chapter 24, verses 7 through 10. Psalms 24, verses 7 through 10. And again, I want to thank God for his confirmation because last month, Pastor Gurley he spoke on the weightier matters and God has uh, given me a word today and we're going to talk about weight lifters. So I thank God for his confirmation because I never want to get up here and think it's all about me and uh, get ahead of God or just don't even consider God on what he want me to speak about. So I thank God for his confirmation. While you're getting your Bibles, let us say a word of prayer. Father, once again, I just thank you for this awesome opportunity that you have given your son. 
And as always, God, I never take this for granted. It's a privilege, it's an honor to come before your people and minister the word of God. Now, God, I ask that you will speak through me, that you will guide me, that you will be my mouthpiece. Again, as I decrease, that you increase. And I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father, for what you're going to do here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, Psalms 24, 7 through 10, it says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall, not might, not maybe, but shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors. And again, the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory, Selah. Think about it. We read in this verse twice that God is saying, lift up your heads. And he said it twice. And whenever God says something twice, he is trying to get our attention. And again, my message today is weight lifters. You know, one of the things I always like to do when I'm bringing the word of God is I like to use analogies, personal uh, testimonies that happen in my life that uh, relate to the message that I'm talking about. And I'm talking about weight lifters. When I was in the, going to the ninth grade, I wanted to play football for the middle school that I was attending, which was Memorial, Memorial, Memorial Middle School. And at the time, this middle school was one of the dominant middle schools there were when it came to football. I mean, if you played for Memorial, you played on a winning tradition team. And so I wanted to uh, play for Memorial. And one of the requirements that Coach Ferrelli required everybody who wanted to play football, we had to attend weightlifting in the summer, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And so here I am, every bit of 98 pounds, never lifted weights in my life. And when I walked in that weight room, I'm seeing all these football players that had been there for a couple of years. I mean, muscles was popping off them. And here I am, this little skinny, 98-pound young man looking to play football. And I'll never forget, when I went on the bench to lift these weights that they had on the bench, I could not do it by myself. So someone had to come and be a spotter. And when you lift them weights, and the weights are too heavy for you, you always have a spotter to spot you so that when the load gets too heavy, the spotter will help you to lift up the weight. I'm talking about weight lifters. In Exodus chapter 17, we find out that Moses was going into battle against Amalek. And so Moses... Aaron and Ur went to the top of the mountain and he told Joshua to go down and fight the battle. And the Bible says that when Moses' hand was lifted, that the Israelites were winning the battle. But when his hands came down, they started losing the battle. And the Bible says that Moses' hands became very heavy. And what did Aaron and Ur do? One went on one side and the other on the other side. And they began to spot Moses and began to lift up Moses' hands. And the Bible says that the Israelites began to win the battle until the going down of the sun. I'm saying that God wants to be your spotter. He wants to be the one to lift you up when you can't do it yourself. But you got to allow him because he will never do anything against your will. 
Psalms 24 says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. You are going to have to do something. And if you allow King Jesus, the King of glory, to come in and be your spotter, he will lift that burden as you lift up your hands in praise to him. Now we go to another situation in the Bible. Talking about Paul and Silas. And we all know the story. We know we're familiar with it. This is when Paul and Silas was locked in jail. And the Bible records that while Paul and Silas went up to pray, there was a young lady, a slave girl, who had a unfamiliar spirit. And she was possessed with this spirit. But the, the, her masters used this young slave girl to bring them much profit. But she knew the difference between right and wrong. She knew that Paul and Silas was full of God and full of the Holy Spirit. And she would testify that these men are the men, the true men of God. And every day she would annoy Paul and Silas. And the Bible says that Paul got greatly annoyed. And he said to the spirit to come out of her. And when the spirit came out, she no longer brought profit to her masters. And her masters got upset. And so they brought Paul and Silas before the magistrates and said, these men are troubling us. Let me tell you something. If you hit somebody in their pockets, their hearts in their minds will follow. And Paul and Silas, because of what they did to the young lady, caused the prophets to stop. And so they put Paul and Silas in jail. Before they put them in jail, they begin to beat them. And not only did they put them in jail, the Bible says they put them in the inner jail and chained them. In other words, they was in consolidatory confinement. And the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas begin to sing praise to the Lord. They begin to lift up praises to the Lord. And the Bible says that there was a great earthquake that shook the whole prison. And because of the praises from Paul and Silas, it broke the chains of all the prisoners. And not only that, the doors were open. I'm talking about weightlifters. If you would dare to lift your praises to God, God will take whatever weight that is on you and he will begin to lift that weight off you. But you got to praise God. You got to lift your hands to God and you got to give him the glory and the honor. And the Bible says that the jailer who was keeping the prisoners saw this and wanted to commit suicide because he thought that they were all going to escape. And Paul said, uh-uh, we're all here. And the Bible says that the man said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul led that prison, that, 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 that prison keeper, that guard, to the Lord. I'm telling you that there are some people that are around you and when they see what you're going through and they see that you refuse to give in they see that you refuse to succumb to those to the things that are around you they're going to ask you who is it that you serve and because of your testimony you're going to deliver those that look at you because God has lifted the weight off your shoulders. Now I want to say this. Jesus said in John chapter 16 verse 33. He said in this world you will have tribulations. You are going to have tribulations in this world. That was a quote from Jesus. He says, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. 
And then David said in Psalms 34 and 19, he said, many, many are the afflictions. Not a few, not a little, but he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. So if you want to live right, the righteous means to be on the right side of God, to be doing the things that God uh, requires you to do, to be obedient to God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of them all. No one is exempt from trouble. Or you are going to go through trouble. And especially if you are living before God, you are going to experience some trouble. It's going to happen. But God will deliver you out of them all. No one is exempt. From the bomb on the streets to the billionaire in his penthouse. Billionaires are jumping out of windows too. If you don't believe me, just Google billionaires who have committed suicide. Because in this life, in this world, you are going to go through some troubles. You know what? One of the things, and I'm talking about weightlifters, that I was always curious about is how in the world do a commercial commercial airline aircraft as heavy as that thing is how in the world do those planes fly I mean they, they can fly thousands of feet in the air a 747 F aircraft weighs 90,000 pounds how in the world can a, a, a piece of equipment that weighs 90,000 pounds can fly 42,000 feet in the air? Well, I'm glad you asked. And doing my research, there are four things that are needed for this aircraft at 90,000 pounds to soar in the air at 42,000 feet. The first thing it needs is thrust. The second thing it needs is lift. The third thing it needs is drag. And the fourth thing it needs is weight. Thrust, lift, drag, and weight. Now thrust is when the engines pushes the plane forward at a high speed. That's called praise. Lift is when the air when the plane is going at a fast place, pace on the ground, lift is when the airflow goes across, goes over the wings and throwing the air down to the ground, it causes the plane to lift. The wings are called when you extend your hands to God and praise. Drag, now check this out. Drag is when the resistance or the force of gravity holds back the plane. It needs the drag to cause the plane to be lifted up. What are you saying, Minister Tony? I'm saying that trouble is very important for your life because it is the trouble that's going to lift, lift you and elevate you to the next level. You need drag in your life. And the last thing is the weight. The weight from the, 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 the lift that, that overcomes, it's the lift that overcomes the plane's weight that holds the plane in the sky. You need thrust. You need to praise God. You need lift, which is uh, 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 that causes you to, to, to the air to, to, to lift you when it blows across the wings of the airplane, and you need the weight. You need all four of those in order for the aircraft to fly in the air. David said this in Psalms 119, 71. It was good for me that I was afflicted because then 
I learned your ways. So I'm saying, saints, the trouble in your life, it comes to lift you higher than where you are now. But you got to praise God. And I want to speak to those who may be going through some hurt in your life. For whatever reason, I want to speak to you. Psalms 34 and 18 says this. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. And when I say the word heart, I am not talking about this muscle in your chest. When the Bible talks about the word heart, he's talking about your mind. And a broken mind is a mind that is dysfunctional. It's a mind that is not in the correct order. It's out of order. When your mind is dysfunctional and it's not working properly, it is out of order, it will cause you to make bad decisions. God says he is near the broken heart. God wants to be your spotter today. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, it says this, that the earth was without form, it was, uh, thank you Lord, let me, let me turn to it real quick, because this is, this is very, very important. Genesis chapter 1, thank you Lord. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. It says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the deep, on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. There was three things wrong with the earth. It was without form. When the Bible talks about form, Form is when, is when you have no order. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 40, let everything be done in decency and in order. It had no form. It was without order. Then it says it was void. Void is having no purpose. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says to everything there is a season, a time, for every purpose. And then the last thing, darkness was over the face of the earth. And in 1 John 5 and 1, the Bible says, For God is light, and in him there is no darkness. So these three things that was happening on the earth, God had to change them. And when the Bible says that he was hovering over, to hover means to be suspended or to, be, to remain in one place in the air. So God was hovering over. And whatever you're going through, if you are in a place where you feel like you have no purpose in your life, you feel like your life is out of order, you feel like there, there's darkness, there, there is no light, that God is hovering over your situation. Because he is near those who have a broken heart. And whenever you see a major accident, whether it be a fire, whether it be an accident uh, 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 in, in a vehicle, when the accident is so severe that the, 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 the emergency people can't get in, they will always send a helicopter. And that helicopter will hover over the scene of the accident because it is there to rescue those who are in need. And that's what God is doing. Whenever you are at a point in your life where your life needs rescuing, God is hovering over your situation. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 6, verse 3. Isaiah 26 and 3 says this, that you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in you. There are two things that you need to understand about God and Satan. 
two things that they have in common. And those two things are this, that they want to control your mind. God and Satan is after your mind. Those two things they have in common. Why? The reason for this is that the most powerful force that we possess as human beings on the earth is our mind. Because every decision that we will ever make first begin with a thought. Proverbs chapter 23 and 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart. Remember the word heart is not talking about your muscle in your chest. As a man thinks in his mind, so is he. 95% of what we do is mental. Because your mind is more powerful than the promises of God. Deuteronomy 1 and 2. We find that God is getting ready to take the children of Israel into the promised land. And in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 1, verse 2, the Bible records that it was an 11-day journey for the Israelites to go into the promised land. 11-day journey. And then the Bible says, in the 40th year, Moses began to talk to them about entering the promised land. Because your mind is more powerful than the promise. It took Israel 40 years when it could have taken them 11 days. Why? Because their minds were not changed. They couldn't get their minds out of Egypt. And the Bible says that that generation died not going into the promised land because they couldn't overcome their negative thinking. When I went to Israel, and we was on our way to the promised land from Cairo, Egypt. From Cairo, Egypt, on a bus ride, it took eight hours. If you walk, it would have taken about 30 days. To get on a plane, it takes about an hour. It took the Israelites, y'all, 40 years. That was the Israelites. What is taking you so long to get to your promise that God has prom promised you? It's your mind. Because your mind is more powerful than God promises. You got to change your mind, saints. And God ain't going to change it for you. He will help you. I'm talking about weightlifters now. God will help you. But until you make up in your mind, the reason why you ain't lost that weight yet is because you ain't changed your mind. The reason why you ain't left that job yet and to pursue the career that, that you want to pursue is because you ain't changed your mind. The reason why you keep getting into that bad relationship over and over again is because you haven't changed your mind. Proverbs chapter 4 and 23 says this. Keep your heart, which is your mind, with all diligence. That word diligence means to always think positive. To think highly. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. In other words, your behavior, good or bad, good or bad, is what will cause you to have a negative or positive mindset. For instance, two men lose their job. Two men lose their job. One man plans while the other panic because it's your mindset. The difference between Job and Judas is that when Job ran into all his trouble, he fell down and he worshiped God and he did not charge God. Judas, when he knew he had done wrong, about betraying Jesus, he went and hung himself. 
because he couldn't get the negativity out of his mind. A lot of what we go through in this life is because we hold stuff in our hearts, which is our mind. We need to let that stuff go, saints. I'll never forget this, and we're getting ready to close. I'll never forget this. When I went over to Israel, and once again, we went to the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea from a distance looked beautiful. It looks gorgeous. It looks so pretty. Like you want to just go down to the beach and jump in the beach and, and, and take pictures. But as we got closer to the water, we realized that the salt that was in the water was so thick that nothing grows there. All the water flows down the Jordan River into the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is 1,300 feet below sea level. Sea level. It is the lowest point on the face of the earth because everything flows in and nothing goes out. So there is no relief. relief. And I'm saying, saints, you got to let that stuff go and allow God to lift your burdens. Let us pray. Father, I thank you once again for this message, weightlifters. And God, you want to be our spotter. You want to come in as the king of glory and win these battles that we are facing today. But God, you will not do that except we allow you to. So God, I pray for that person who are going through things right now, that they will allow the King of Glory to come in and be their spotter to lift that burden off their lives. And God, I thank you because you are the true weight lifter. And God, continue to do what you do as we continue to believe in you and that you get the glory and the praise. And we thank you and we call it done. Until next time, God bless you and keep letting God be your spotter. Thank you.